Good afternoon all blinking lights, yet yeah, flashing blue LEDs on this um, 6 times 10 farad supercapacitor module and I'm charging it uh, with a solar panel and it's obviously fully charged and those are the little um, discharge protection circuits or balancing circuits kicking in and of course the response is quite quick uh, because the capacitors are such a small value 10 farads each. Let's take a look at the voltage. It's 16.4 volts. Uh, nominally, they should be 2.7 each, so that should be 16.2. They're slightly above that. But then I think we worked out, didn't we, that these voltage detector ICs, which will be the little SOT23 three pin device on the left, are actually designed for measuring um, under voltage for micro. Uh, controller circuits. So when they're used for measuring over voltage, there's, um, they're pushed up to the other end of the hysteresis. So they do actually uh, trigger at a slightly higher voltage. Um, so the idea of this setup, it's just something I threw together quickly, is to do with uh, the Muppet 2 project. Um, this is actually being charged by a tiny little solar panel. It's that one out there. It's um, a 2 watt that I got from, it's an amorphous panel. I got that from Maplin uh, ooh, several years ago. Let's have a closer look at it. Uh, right, so here it is. I'm just going to cast my own shadow over it, which will, of course, um, well, it starts cracking already because it's cooling down. Um, that's going to mean that it's not charging those supercapacitors anymore. Let's take a quick look at the back. It says it's a model TPS, uh, whatever it is, 102, 2.4 watts. Rated power 2.4 watts at 17.5 volts. I'm not sure I believe it can develop 2.4 watts, uh, maybe one and a half or something like that. And uh, with that panel sort of flipped over outside, it's going to get very hot because it's all black plastic. Uh, of course, it's no longer charging uh, this thing, so the lights are no longer flashing, but the voltage hasn't fallen away very quickly at all. Now, there's no anti backfeed diode. Uh, that device there in the cable is a small fuse, um, but it doesn't seem that there is much back feed into that solar panel. And that's not really surprising because solar panels don't uh, consume much current. So the equivalent circuit of a solar panel, as I remember it, uh, per cell, I think is a voltage source, like so, in parallel with a diode, which I believe points downwards, so ground will be at the bottom. Let's have another voltage source for the next cell. I'm having to do this one-handed. There'll be another diode uh, there, so it's kind of like that. Um, now you might think that uh, here I've got my load, which is supercapacitors. Ooh, how can I draw that? Oh, well, let's just draw it as an electrolytic, uh, like so. And that's charged up. Now you might think if um, there's no sun on these voltage sources, this can discharge through these diodes. But actually it doesn't because these diodes have a forward voltage drop. So um, the voltage source is about half a volt, 0.6 volt. The forward voltage drop of the diode is something similar. So there just isn't enough voltage on here to having been charged by these voltage sources to discharge through these diodes because of, I've missed a bar out there, haven't I? Um, because of the, the phone slipping out of my hand because of their forward voltages. Now what the equivalent circuit also has is a resistor in parallel here. These, these are very high value resistors. Um, so it's actually these resistors that are going to cause eventually, ooh, I've got to be careful not to short these to get two together because that's at 16 volts. So my meter's gone off. Let's turn that back on. Uh, yeah, 16.2 volts. There'd be a bit of a crack there if I did that. Um, yes, it will eventually discharge through these resistors, but uh, these are very high resistors. Now, of course, um, the equivalent circuit of a solar panel is probably more than this. There's probably some series resistance. There'll be some capacitance. There'll be some inductances. You know, there's every component in the book somewhere in the equivalent circuit. But these are the relevant things. The diodes don't conduct because of their forward voltage. The resistors, being a very high value, conduct, but... Um, the drain on that capacitor is very, very tiny. It discharges very, very slowly. 16.24. I can't remember if that's a bit less than it was when I last looked. 
got some absolutely uh, fantastic weather at the moment so I kind of wanted to make good use of it by doing solar related stuff okay so that's flipped back over shut the door we don't want uh, insects in here and uh, yeah we're back to um, these things being fully charged the little um, discharging circuits what's happening here are the MOSFETs are switching on when the capacitor reaches 2.7 volts or slightly above probably switching on that uh, resistor to discharge said capacitor I've added these blue LEDs um, they're just in parallel with these resistors of course those resistors never see more than 2.7 volts you can put 2.7 volts through a blue LED with no series resistor because it just isn't anywhere near the voltage required for a significant current to flow and in any case the current that is flowing through that LED is only flowing at the same time that it's flowing through the resistor so you want current flow and discharge that capacitor at that time. So as I said, um, this is likely to be that solar panel as an input device and the supercapacitor as an output device is likely to be one of the next things I do on the Muppet 2 on its new uh, breadboard. Uh, so I've just been working on this breadboard today. Um, let's see what's on the top. You've seen the inductor, the Schottky diode I've bent into this rather interesting S shape. S for shock key maybe, but it's mainly so that I can undo these and just get the thing out. Um, and I've made up a MOSFET which has the gate and source connections on little Arduino style DuPont pins and it has thicker wires for the high current path there on drain and source. Let's flip it over. I've done the um, interconnecting of the closely spaced terminal posts. There's no interconnection between the far away spaced ones because they're the ones that I will link with topside components so they're always going to be two inches um, between the connections of a of a component the one inch spacings are linked underneath so I had some uh, fun soldering these uh, I didn't think I'd show that because nobody wants to watch me solder but uh, yeah I mean it's about heat transfer isn't it so just have to get uh, solder on the tip get enough heat into these posts and uh, they've all soldered up quite nicely. I've put little rubber feet on here. These rubber feet I've had for years and years and years. I think came from Maplin originally. Um, some of them are spaced with little washers because this piece of board isn't entirely flat and uh, it was rocking, but it's absolutely solid. Now it'll rock on there, of course, because two of the feet aren't on the mat. It's a bit big, this thing. Um, but yeah, this sits very nice with those offset uh, washer spaced feet. Um, so these three components make up a simple uh, buck converter arrangement. We've got a MOSFET switch coming in, diode to ground facing up and um, an inductor going out to the output. Um, if I replace that Schottky diode, uh, well it could be a regular diode actually, if I replace it with another MOSFET then I can do uh, the synchronous switching, switching one on and then the other one off at the correct timing of course and I've got the Arduino software to do that now I can do uh, synchronous rectification but conversion so the way this uh, is intended to work with that solar panel on the input and the supercapacitor on the output the solar panel has an open circuit voltage of probably in excess of 20 volts now that would mean that it would take the supercapacitor module um, theoretically too high in voltage it does have those protection circuits so it's not a major problem but let's say I want to take that supercapacitor module up to say 15 volts and stop there well then I can tweak the buck converter vary the pulse width modulation with a pot I've ordered some new pots actually they'll probably appear in a forthcoming post bag um, so that the input can be 20 volts or thereabouts and the output can be 15 a buck converter of course steps down and then the uh, supercapacitor output load if you want to call it that will never rise above um, 15 volts or whatever voltage I want to limit it to by virtue of using this buck converter to step the solar panel voltage down. Now one thing I'm going to need are some linking wires because I need to link across these grounds um, but actually I might not even use wires because let's say I have a MOSFET here and a MOSFET coming down here then um, I've got a, um, I have a power supply on the input here I've got a MOSFET MOSFET in a loop circuit. Now if I accidentally turn them both on, let's say I switch on my Arduino and it turns these two MOSFETs on, 
by accident. I really want a fuse in here. And what I'm planning to do, because I've got quite a few of these, is to make up some little polyfuse uh, links so that instead of putting a, a wire link in here, I just put polyfuses in. And then if I have any mishaps turning two MOSFETs on at the same time, the polyfuse should uh, absorb that. If the input device is current regulated, of course, we will uh, have a maximum current. Solar panel is current regulated. A solar panel can't produce more current than it's rated for, so it's inherently current rate uh, regulated. I can also, if I'm using a power supply as my input device, um, I can set the current limit on that. The only time there would be a problem probably is if I was using something like a lead acid battery or a supercapacitor as the input device. There's no way really to limit the current flow from that. So uh, the polyfusers I think would be useful to put in these ground links to make sure that I've got something in the circuit that can uh, cope with a mishap. So further work to do. I need to make uh, some more of these. One initially, these are MOSFETs with the thick wires on drain and source and the little um, DuPont style Arduino type connectors on gate and source so that I can switch the MOSFETs on and off using these uh, MOSFET drivers. Need to make another one of these. Uh, I might use the, the different opto isolator. Uh, what was it called? The 1201 or 2501 or something like that. The NEC ones. See if they're any faster than these uh, Sharp PC817. So I've got to make another one of those. Eventually I'll need four of these when I've got four MOSFETs. One there, one there, one there, and one across there. Um, I'll probably make up some more of these uh, various loads. This is a 5 watt, 12 volt lamp. You can drive these up to about 15 volts. They're quite tolerant of higher voltages because of course they're used in uh, vehicles and when the alternator's running it's 14 point something. Um, but these lamps are just hopeless when you buy them from the pound shop, they just fall apart. So I need to go and get some uh, better quality ones. Maybe I'll go to Halfords or something like that. So yes, while well, we've got this uh, very nice weather, we've got uh, what looks like about 10 days of this. Um, yeah, Muppet 2 is the project of choice. And uh, so I'm sort of interested in solar stuff because uh, we're getting fairly uninterrupted uh, sun and uh, blinking lights. Yeah, everyone likes blinking lights. Cheerio.